And now we're going to start with uh, Promise Neverland, uh, season two. This is the first episode of the second season just aired. Um, so, like, going off, back off where the first uh, season ended, we got we got the kids escaping from the orphanage, and then right, we go right into the action with, like, them being chased by the beasts, and then we meet the two uh, new characters that were introduced in this episode. And so... They're setting up a lot of things for the upcoming season, but before we get into that, I just, I'll just open the floor for anyone else who wants to give their thoughts, because I know you guys have a lot of things you want to say for the Promise Neverland. Well, for, for all my Spanish speakers, me gusta mucho, okay? That <laughs> roughly translates to best show of all time. <laughs> roughly, roughly. He's right. Okay? He's right. I'll confirm. Yep. Um... I think it was a really strong episode from the get-go. We got the preview of that giant black beast just chasing them down the forest. And then, obviously, they cut back to an earlier point. But I liked it a lot. Don't ever trust people with robes. That's my good old uh, family value. So uh, we'll see how these underground beasts turn out. But overall, I just thought it was a really strong episode. But you guys dig into some details. Um... These kids are 12 years old the <laughs> oldest ones right yep this kid like they're solving things and deciphering morse code i've never been able to decipher the letter a in my life in morse code okay they're 12 and two this kid ray is out running a 10 foot beast two of them for like who knows how far like three miles or some shit these kids whoa, are whoa. legit legit superhumans do like the fact of like how they animated Ray looking so exhausted at the end of that though. I really like that they included that. Like they 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 it like he he was dying panting. And so it showed that it he was running as hard as he possibly could. Yes, could a 12-year-old outrun those? No, but still. I like that they included it. And like I don't really mind that they're supposed to be geniuses because they're basically raised to be that way. The thing I think that irks me is like okay so you can like you can teach somebody to be book smart i guess but like when it comes to connecting different clues together and figuring out what's going on like that that takes a different type of intelligence that i would not think that they'd be wanting to teach these kids um and that even if they did they're still really young it's hard to put all of those like circumstantial evidence together of what's happening in their world the way that they're doing it in my opinion but i mean who cares the show's great it was a great first episode to, to to Brian's point, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, we had so many distractions growing up. It's like the difference between mm-hmm. being raised in public education and then being raised in someone's household where, like they said, they're preparing you to be eaten. Uh, eaten, eaten. And uh, the main way they do that is by judging you based on your capability of intelligence, right? So your IQ score. So their whole, remember, they were like daily testing and all they ever do for fun is play tag. I don't remember them playing any other game besides tag. So I think their endurance and their intelligence is way higher than most. And I think under these situations, you got to be that smart. Hence why they're leading the crop. It's not like every one of those kids is that smart. So in defense of the show that I find pretty awesome, I'll say that part. It, It really did not bother me at all because I think... Come on, man. We're dealing with people who got bells and waters for dinner. Like, that's all they're getting. So, yep. The one thing I'll say is I constantly find myself just really only caring about Ray, Emma, Norman, the rest of the younger kids, besides Phil. Phil is the OG, the one kid that, you know, stayed Steve behind. One, yeah, back at the orphanage. Yeah, 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 back at the orphanage to kind of just keep an He's eye so on adorable. everything. Yeah, F- Phil is awesome. Uh, but, uh, what I like to call Aunt Jemima, the one younger girl who, in the end of season one, was afraid to cross the uh, the rope bridge or whatever, and then also in this <laughs> first episode fell down when they're running away from the beast monitor. I was just like, God damn it, Jemima! Like again, what? Can you just you just need to be you go gone? You know, you're dead weight. I hate to say it. <laughs> Yep. It's so, really yeah, brutal I, I having to done. try to like fight and run for your life with a bunch of like six year olds, five year olds. Right? But I like the fact that Ray mentioned that in season one. Mm-hmm. Like, because it, it's realistic, right? I mean, I've, been, I've thought that watching every zombie show ever. Like, these people are like running around with like babies or whatever. And I'm like, oh my God, that thing's going to get everybody killed. And I like the fact that Ray brought it up. And yeah, you're not wrong. That'll be part of their struggle. 
watch. The, the only like ethnic kid in that group, he's gonna die first. Just wait. He's, he's athletic and he can teach the kids how to play tag, but he's gonna get stabbed to death. There's watch. more than one. There's the older one and then there's the younger girl. I don't. But oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you're right. Glasses in the other one. Yeah. I stand corrected. Well, the one kid who's, you know, who didn't believe them for, I, I have a feeling he's going to die this season. He's going to be like, hey guys, I think we could trust these underground aliens completely. And then he's going to, you know, get close to that girl with the really nasty feet. <laughs> She's going to cut him up. Just wait. That's my prediction. Um, so one of the questions I had for this show too was, was um, Minerva. Like, because I forgot, like, who, like, who he was from season one. So, like, is he supposed to be like a human that helps him out, or is he like one of these like one of the demons who are against like not the said. cattle farm and like and trying to help that way too? Or what do you think? I think all we really know about Minerva is that he's kind of like the sole bastion for humanity in this world, where you know he's obviously provided like the books and all these other uh, breadcrumbs to have people uncover what the farm system is and how to kind of survive in this world. So. Um, I think that's all we really know about him at this time. Yeah, I don't remember anything besides them alluding to the fact through the book hints that, oh, there must be someone that's on our side. Do we trust like yeah. these new two new characters? Do you think that they're actually out there to help out the kids or do they have some other um, intentions in mind? I feel like they're going to be do. like... They're going to help them, and they're, they're going to have their own purpose, their own thing that they want to accomplish, but I feel like ultimately they're going to help them. I would say I've created the whole backstory for the show already in my mind. Go, go I think <laughs> aliens were looking for a place to feed, just like that Twilight Zone episode where they come to Earth and they say, hey, to serve man, we're going to give you guys this book. And then the big twist at the end is they're just taking humans up to serve them for dinner. Hey, but so... I think majority of aliens are pretty bad and evil, just like, you know, Transformers, the Decepticons rule by majority. And then the Autobots are like the 10 few robots left. Well, in this case, I think there's an underground network of them. And you got Harriet Tubman, a.k.a. Dr. Minerva, leading that rebellion secretly, right? The only way that it can, because I don't think these things really have genders. So I think uh, you've got this like, 20, maybe 10% of these aliens are like, wow, what we do is wrong. We go to different planets, we look for food supplies, and then we feast and we go to other planets. So that's my prediction is you have this underground network of rebels who are like, nah, we don't want to be the evil aliens anymore. We want to live in peace. I mean, I actually feel like that's accurate, probably. It sounds like they got the, what it sounds like the show is going to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, that I like the fact that it feels a little... Like, there were some elements of this episode that reminded me of Maiden Abyss. With, like, the... Like, everything we've seen up until this point... And correct me if I'm wrong, I, I haven't touched this show since it last aired. Uh, I don't remember there being any creatures in the show that we hadn't seen other than the demons. No, this is, like, the first um, like, time we've we've seen, like... Yeah. Especially them talking. Because I was, I was not expecting them to be talking in a language that you would understand them. I thought it'd be, like, more, like, alien language, but... Mm -hmm. They're talking normally, so that's the first time we've seen them in this, in this episode or this series. Yeah, yeah, there was that, but then the, it also just showed like all of the like local wildlife and uh, plants and stuff like that, and it was obviously not something that exists here in our planet. So I thought that was kind of cool because it kind of turned it into an adventure thing for me as well, which I figured it would a little bit with them escaping, but it it definitely gave me some made an abyss vibes that I liked a lot. True that. And I like how they weaved in them knowing about the plants through children's books. Yeah. So Dr. Minerva obviously planned out like how to feed information mm -hmm. in a secretive way. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is from that one story. This is the water plant. Yay. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> so I thought that was actually a really nice touch. And I agree mm -hmm. with you. It does give me some Made in Abyss vibes. Um, but I like it. I was terrified of what's going to happen to the story outside of the kind of like Attack on Titan. When it went out outside the wall, you're like, where is this gonna go? I don't know. I like being in the wall. Take me back to the wall. So that's why I was like, and plus, as much of a villain as she was, was it Isabel or Isabella? Isabella, Isabella. right? Yeah. Isabella. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, I thought Isabella was a wonderful character. Like, I was glued to the screen every time she was on. I was like, how is she gonna yeah. combat these smart kids? So I actually found this really nice, and I'm curious to see how 
things are going to pan out from here. But obviously, these uh, these aliens, they just dirty. Yeah, like I wonder how they're going to keep the tension from season one because like it was perfect setup in the house because there's like very little you can go to. So like it was easy to trap people. So I'm wondering how they keep that tension here outside the wall when you have a lot of space to explore. I miss some of the elements of like the head like the head games that happened from last season. I feel like that's not going to be so much of a thing this season. I mean, they were all very intimately in the same space, like basically trying they, to outsmart they to, each like, other. Pretend, like they didn't know what was going on mm -hmm. too. So. Exactly, and I really liked that element, and I'm sure I'm going to like this show even without that. But I I do miss. Like I like the the adventure aspect, but I'm gonna miss that part and uh, like that yeah. the whole yeah that whole tension of like of if the of the the farm like that that mm -hmm. what drew me to to this show so mm -hmm. we'll see how it ha handles it this season yeah, yeah. oh yeah it, I'm waiting for my boy off. Norman <laughs> oh yeah I wonder if he's gonna sh show up I mean we all assume he's pretty much alive so I think we're assuming he's gonna show yeah. up yeah. but sorry Taylor you had another point. Uh, I got side railed by Norman. Don't worry about it. Oh, good. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting for is that tie in with Norman because, you know, he, they're using his genius level skills for something. Watch when, when they can't catch these guys, they're going to rely on Norman. And then that's where the head games are going to come in. That's my prediction. So Ooh, that'll be exciting. Yes. yes. What's uh, your uh, predictions, though? This aren't in stone. <laughs> I was just going to end up, uh, was the revelation from the end of season one when you learn Ray is Isabella's daughter, was that a big shock factor for you guys? Uh, Our son, yeah. sorry. It was yeah. for me. For me, yeah. <laughs> I got it. I, I just, I, it was more of like, man, that's fucked up. Like, all this yeah. stuff happened mm -hmm. and he has to run away from his own mom. Like, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, it, yes. was, it shocked me. I was like, holy shit, this is the most amazing episode ever. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, the more shocking thing for me was like at the end when they all escaped and like, and like, Isabella said, you know, it's all over now, and she had like, the ropes in her hands. I thought she was like, mm -hmm. gonna like hang herself or like, jump off the wall yeah. or something. I thought that's yep. I thought that's how it was gonna end, but Same. like, so I'm surprised it didn't go that dark. Yeah, maybe it happened I agree. off screen. I'm nah, just... nah, Isabella's too chill for that. She probably got eaten though. I think she got eaten. Like, if she didn't <laughs> kill herself, like she got eaten. She makes me kind of sad. Like, I wish we could have her back later well, on I mean, for I... some sort of. That's the, type of show or, that's the type of show that is. It's just fucked up. She has a lot of intel on those kids, so they could use her for that. You just don't know that's with these true. aliens. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> the revelation of him being the son, I had like, I had this inkling. I'm like, man, but nothing solid. So when it did happen, I was still shocked. I was like, oh, but I think I was more shocked when he was trying to commit suicide. When he lit himself on fire, I was like, bro, yeah, right. Ray, you got a bright future ahead of you, bro. What are you doing, man? <laughs> I was like, Ray, don't play. <laughs> he, he just, when you said that he set himself but, on fire, I was like, what the fuck? But is he does true? have a bright future, literally. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> snap. Well played, good sir. I'm well played. Attention. I mean, I don't know about bright future when like, you're going to be eaten soon. But... Dude, he, Dude, he, has, he has a shot played. on Fire Force. <laughs> we don't oh, talk boy. about that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> when all this show went, yes, he has a very good chance. But yeah, I think the, so. Overall, we had a, I'd say a really good uh, first episode. Super excited to see what happens next. And yep, I'm down. Really following this series closely. So that's gonna be oh, and forgot go, go OP was fire. I love the OP. You know me, eighty percent of OPs I find generic. I really like the OP here. So really, I don't, I don't even remember it. It did not hit with me. I like season one right. OP better. So yeah, for you guys are scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Sasha, I know how you feel. As the one person who liked the new opening for Attack on Titan. Ah, uh, touche. Touche. <laughs> oh, can I also add the ending of uh, Promised Neverland? I really enjoyed it. That is I like the ending. I yep. I don't remember it either. I need to watch more. I need to hear it more before I can remember. I'll have to listen to it once you guys are done talking about it. So, yep, I'll it. have to listen to it again. Yes, so that's going to be it for Promised Neverland. 